Hi, I'm Mae Kessler. I was a choreographer for the Art of Living World Culture Festival Jewish Israeli Dance that we performed on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. on October 1st last year. That was 2023. The way it started was they called me and asked me to do a Jewish Israeli dance. They wanted like 100 dancers and it was August and the dance was to be performed October 1st. We couldn't really find a lot of Jewish dancers because the date was actually the date of Sukkot. For religious Jews, they wouldn't dance on that day because they wouldn't be able to travel because it's a holiday. So we couldn't find the 150 or 120 dancers. So Art of Living got on the ball and started recruiting some of their members from around the world to dance with us. They recruited people from Australia, Canada, India, England, Brazil, California, New York, and even a group of Russian dancers from Brooklyn. But most of them were beginners. So we had to do a lot of training. Even though the dance was really only four minutes long, with somewhere between 80 and 150 people, we had a lot of rehearsing to do with beginners. So we did Zoom in person, Zoom and in person, and more Zoom and individual Zooms and private classes and used every synagogue that would give us space, including Adat Shalom in Potomac, um, Maryland. And in the end, we had uh, about 80 people from age 8 to 80. And most of them were not Jewish. And I asked why they would want to do this. And most of them said because they just wanted to learn about Judaism. They, some of them knew about the Holocaust, but some of them didn't. And this is from areas out in Asia, like India and other places. And they wanted to learn more and they just wanted to be there and they for this event. They knew that the Jewish Israeli representation in the World Culture Festival wasn't as good as they wanted it to be and they wanted to contribute. And I was gobsmacked to hear that because I was like, who, you know, why? Oh, okay. So I created a dance that kind of told a um, very brief history of the Jewish people starting in Egypt when we were slaves. And I put up six chairs in the middle to signify the six million that were lost in the Holocaust. Both of my parents are Holocaust survivors, and I really wanted to commemorate that, but um, it is such a part of our Jewish history. So the six chairs were there. The dancers stood on the six chairs, a um, very brief moment of being slaves, and then freed, dancing through, wandering through the desert in a... Yemenite dance. And then it turned into Mayim Mayim, which is a very common um, dance that we do at Jewish gatherings and celebrations and weddings and bar mitzvahs. And it celebrates water. And that was the beginning of Israel in 1948. They learned how to irrigate the land so that it would be prosperous and fruitful and grow. And so we did the dance Mayim. First, we did it in concentric circles. So it came from a very small circle to being very large as the population of Israel grew and Judaism flourished again. And then we turned it into circles around um, six, six smaller circles. So signifying that the um, Jewish people then spread around the world. Technically, it wasn't perfect. We only had 10 minutes on the stage and it was a huge stage and we just couldn't rehearse that well on it. Um, the dancers had never even done, some of them had never done makeup at all. And we had to choose costumes and order them and get them delivered from all the way around the world, but they did it. But the thing that really struck me was the instant formation of a human fa family of camaraderie from just the simple desire of wanting to learn about each other, to learn about Judaism and Israel and create something to support it together. It moved me to tears. I felt my dad, who had recently passed away, was encouraging me and watching me with joy. 
after our performance, especially, we were all joyous and skipping around and in front of the Capitol and dressed in our beautiful costumes. And we tried to do a photo shoot and everyone just kept singing, Hadenu Shalom Aleichem, let us have peace together. And it, it was just such a joyous moment. Just six days later came October 7th. Devastated, speechless, horrified. My sister-in-law, who has many family in, in Israel, as do I, said to me on October 8th, I can't even look at it. I looked. I read the news of how horrific an attack Hamas had done. As the months passed, I danced out my anger, grief, and shock. Using a song I had used before by Eddie Angry, a popular Israeli folk singer, to the poetry by Yehuda Halevi, an, um, a scribe from the year 1100, he wrote about how he dreamed about being back in Israel. He was in Spain at the time when he wrote it. I had used a blue cloth in our original dance to signify first the Mayim, the water that helped create Israel to be the flourishing country that it is. I use it here again in a different way. First as a child's blanket, bedding thrown aside in a rape. A person no longer able to stand, suddenly disappearing. A door that couldn't stop a bullet. A prayer shawl saying Kaddish. A whip signifying the anger. A hero's cape. I performed it in April at Elizabeth Streps Theater. Sadly, now October 7th, 2024, a year later, it still rings true. The dance is still relevant. And we are still grieving saddened and shocked. I had no answers, only wishes for the hostages to be free, the soldiers and lost ones to come home, and that we could find a path to peace. Thank you for watching. May we be in peace together.